When Jenny contacted me about co-design, I thought, oh, um, yeah, we can do that. We've already been doing it, and the only obstacles are different language, time zone, and culture, but hey, we can do that. We've learned in the pandemic that the world has, in many respects, become a smaller place, and that we have this incredible resource that we can bring our instructors live, albeit remote, into the classroom. We've been all online and having Zoom classes, and sometimes having a hybrid class is kind of difficult, but I thought, this was one of the better managed ones and out of complete necessity because they're on the other side of the world. It was really cool how much networking she's done globally to allow our class to get to the point that we did working with co-faculty in India and her experience doing this co-design process before so that it would actually work successfully in this classroom setting. One of the things that I really was excited about in the residency is that it's interdisciplinary. I think when people from different backgrounds come together, it gives fresh ways of looking at things and it often sparks a new idea. If we had a whole gamut of people, which was really interesting to me because it was cool to see that fresh perspective of everyone learning so much at once. Not only are like these STEM majors learning from us design students, but us design students are learning from like the STEM majors. And now it's all because of this one course that like is open to anyone on campus. Certainly we had students who said, I've never done this before, but I would say with the help of their partners and the, the readings and the sampling of the crafts, those students were not left behind. We started the course learning about all the four different crafts that we would end up working with in the future to design the scarves. Ajrak, which is block printing, bondany, embroidery, and weaving. We use the looms that are in the weaving studio and also um, Hello Loom, which was created by one of the professors here on campus. And then they did bondany, which is a form of tie-dye where small bits of fabric are pinched and tied very tightly with a fine thread to resist dyeing. And then we put it into the dye pot, dyed it, take it out, remove those ties, and you create a pattern. I just think it's so cool how they can create different like designs and motifs just through the simple action of tying fabric. And then they learned Ajrak block printing, which is the most complex of the traditions. Well, the Ajrak was kind of what drew me into the class when I saw those wooden blocks and, and it lived up to its expectation. We got to have materials sent from India. I've never done block printing before and I've always wanted to try it and being able to do it in more of a traditional way was a good foundation for me and like how I could see it transfer over to more modern techniques too. And we had them learn two embroidery traditions. Unlike previous years, students had never done the crafts and I think that that was a really big difference. I think learning the crafts helped us have a greater sense of appreciation for what the artisans that we would be working with in the next phase of the class do. Another reason that I was really excited about this residency is the wonderful resource of the Helen Louise Allen textile collection. I shortlisted about 20 objects from each of the craft traditions that we were working with and then had the students and the, the co-faculty who came to us virtually from India in the middle of the night. Do you think it's dyed your fun by or printed? Printed. Printed, yeah. The color is printed on. I asked them to choose two favorite objects and then accordingly paired them with the artisan partners. If they chose Ajrak, they would work with an Ajrak printer. If they chose Bondany, they would work with a Bondany artist and so on and so forth. There was immediate rapport when students shared the textile that they had selected as inspiration because it's something that their partner could relate to right away. You would think that having a 12-hour time difference is bad, but the good part of that is, is that you could send your partner a message at night, go to sleep, and you'd have a response in the morning. I would literally have to text Zayim, like the minute I woke up to try to like communicate what I had worked on before, 
and then vice versa, like right before I went to bed, I texted him, like letting him know what I had done during the day. Communicating through pictures was really helpful because sometimes things would get a little lost in translation in text. The day that we got the package was you know, like, like a birthday or Christmas that we were all gathered around and I don't think anyone was disappointed. I was pleasantly surprised that even the color intonation was similar to my sketches. There is almost no like difference between the illustrator files I sent and <laughs> what we see here. I think the difference is like the color, but I like this color way more. I ended up buying one of my scarves too because I loved it so much. The students then had to prepare an exhibition, which in itself is a huge task. Many of the students were involved in preparing the mounts for the objects from the textile collection. They learned how to hang the work. They learned uh, what was a proper label, what height everything should be at. They did the design of the exhibition. They did the uh, mounting of the textiles. They did the installation, and then there was publicity, labels, education, and then there's a virtual exhibition component. And within the Lynn Mecklenburg Textile Gallery, we displayed the co-designed works side by side, the inspiration textile. The exhibition helped us, or helped me gather a sense of in making work thinking about the end product and how it will look displayed. When I asked one of the artisans what he thought of the exhibition, he said, you know, we weave and we sell. But when I see my work in a gallery, I know what level I can reach. And reaching a level is how we get respect. It was a very aspirational moment for the artisan designers. A few days after the exhibition opened, we did a trunk show with the goal of selling all of our co-designs to people here in the Greater Madison community. It's a way of understanding a different way of presentation, but also a different way of calculating value. We had two of the co-design pieces made. It wasn't always possible, and that second one was put in the trunk show. For a craft tradition to survive, artisans have to sell their work. I was able to sell both of mine, which I'm really happy about. So I think we were able to sell about like 70 something percent of the scarves that were sent to us from the artisans. So that was like a great accomplishment for our class. The experience of being able to work one-on-one -on -one with an artisan in India is like beyond anything that I ever expected from my college career. And even being able to show my work and curate an exhibit is something that I wasn't really thinking that would ever happen. I'm glad I was able to take Global Artisans during her residency. I know it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity.